please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2018. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences mathematics A and another for natural sciences mathematics B. This problem is from the 2018 mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 6 of 1. Let S be a square with side length 1, T a triangle with side lengths 1, 1, square root of 2, and R a triangle with side lengths 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. Let C be a pyramid with a base that is S and lateral faces consisting of two T's and two R's. The volume of C then is blank. Let us now review some ideas that we will use. First is the volume of a pyramid, because we are asked for the volume of a pyramid. Let us recall that that volume is simply one third of the base area times the height. So the height here is actually the perpendicular distance from the base to the apex. The apex is the top of the pyramid. If I just draw that very quickly, if you have a pyramid that looks like this, then this is the apex that we're referring to. So the height is the perpendicular distance from the apex to the base. So you have to draw something that is perpendicular out there. So ideally, you'd want a right triangle from here to here to here. And then we also want to recall the triangle inequality because we are dealing with triangular faces. And that is simply the fact that if you take any one of the sides, then it should be smaller. The, the measure of the side should be smaller than the sum of the other two sides. And lastly, we review the Pythagorean theorem that says that if you have a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of two sides, a squared plus b squared, equals the square of the third side. And the converse is also true. If this is true, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you also have a right triangle. In other words, you have a right triangle if and only if this holds. Let us now try to examine what we were given. So we are given two triangles, T, 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 which is an, uh, an isosceles right triangle because it's 1, 1 and 2 square root of 2. And we also notice that that satisfies this Pythagorean theorem because 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the square root of 2 squared. And therefore, each of these is a right triangle. Then we are also given triangles R, which we know to be right scaling because the sides again satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So 1 squared plus square root of 2 squared is actually equal to the square root of 3 squared. So we have four right triangles and we have a square base. So that's the S here. Now we want to construct the pyramid. So we notice that because it is a square base, then it has four equal sides. And that means that the side length of S, which we shall call the lowercase s, it must be both in S or rather in T and R. So one of the sides of T and one of the sides of R should become the side here. And because one of these, two of these sides will be, will be bounded by T and two of these sides will be bounded by R, then there must be some length in T and some length in R that are equal to this side of S. And therefore, there must be some length in T that is also equal to some length in R because those will become the sides of this square. And Therefore, 
we only have the two possibilities that the side of s could only be one because one is common between t and r so there's one here there's one here or it could also be square root of two because this is common square root of two and square root of two again that will become one side of s to briefly review we know that the faces of our pyramid are all right triangles because the faces are either r or t and both of these are right triangles we also know that the base s could only have a side of either one or square root of two and here we will consider the possibility of s being the square root of two so let's try to draw that so if we draw the base here and we think of the sides each of the side sides to be square root of two then there are two possible arrangements of the faces we could have the first possibility is when the r's and the t's alternate so we have r t r t and in that case it would look like this so this side would be square root of two and therefore the other two sides of this triangle here would be one and one because those are the only sides of t for r that would be square root of two here and therefore the other side could only be one and here could only be square root of three here we do not have a problem because when we close this to make a pyramid this side is one and this side is one so it will close properly but we do have a problem here because this side could only be square root of three and this side is one and so if we try to close that it wouldn't become a pyramid it wouldn't close the pyramid and therefore we do not have to think of this of this configuration any further and we eliminate it from the possibilities the only other possibility is that the r's are next to each other and the t's are next to each other so in other words the t's are between an, an r and a t so again let's draw that so here we draw the base again let's draw the t first so for the t because the the side is square root of 2 the t does not really have a choice here it has to be this way the sides 1 and 1 would be outside because this is the only side that's square root of 2 for the other t it would also just look like this so we don't have a problem here because this is 1 and this is 1 that's fine now the other side would be 1 and therefore for the r this side should be 1 so that they could close properly in here and this side is square root of 2 and therefore this other side should be square root of 3 and therefore the other r could only look like this the square root of 3 here matches with the square root of 3 here and the 1 here matches with a 1 here now it looks like we have a well-formed pyramid with these sides and faces and let's just check to make sure that they actually close properly meaning that the vertices here actually meet at a single point at the apex and now let's try to see what happens at the diagonals so we notice that if if we close this up into a pyramid the apex could be a vertex of another triangle and the other two vertices are the sides of the diagonal so for example if we consider this diagonal from this bit here to this bit then we form a triangle whose vertices are this this and the apex of the pyramid and the length of this diagonal because the side length here is square root of two then we just have a square root of two here as well so that's an isosceles right triangle so the length of the diagonal is square root of two times square root of two so that is just two so the length of one side of the triangle is two the other side is one and the other side would be square root of three because that's this so we have this diagonal this side and this side and that's fine because this satisfies the triangle inequality that means it's a valid triangle because we have one plus square root of three is greater than two 
square root of 3 plus 2 is greater than 1. And of course, 1 plus 2 is greater than square root of 3. So that's for this diagonal here. Now let's look at the other diagonal, this bit. Again, the length of this diagonal is square root, or rather is 2, just 2. And the, the sides would be, this side would be 1. And the other side would be 1. So that's a triangle that is 1, that is 1, 2, and 1. We do have a problem with this triangle because this does not satisfy the triangle inequality. We have a 2 here, which is not greater than 2, which is 1 plus 1. And so this is not a triangle. And now we have eliminated the possibility of S being square root of 2. So now let's consider the other possibility that's left, which is s equals 1. If that's the case, then we again have the two other possibilities, which is that the r's are arranged such that they are alternates, they are alternate with t, so rt, rt. And if that's the case, then because we have we have here 1 and we have here square root of 2, and here square root of 3, then for the triangle here, it could only be like this because it's a square root of 2, square root of 2. So they match. It's fine. Again, we have a problem here because this is square root of 2 here and this is square root of 3. So they don't again close up the, the, par the pyramid. So we have a problem with this configuration. So the only other possibility is, again, the t's are next to each other and the r's are next to each other. So again, we have a side of, of length 1. And then if we have r here, so this is 1. So here we have square root of 2. So on this side, we could have this t here, the hypotenuse, because it's the square root of 2. And on this side, we have square root of 3. And here it's also square root of 3. So this is the only possible configuration for the r's. And here we are left with 1 here. so this side must be 1, and here is square root of 2. So this side here must be square root of 2, and that fits perfectly with the remaining t. And now we try to close the pyramid so that this, 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 and this meet at the apex. Now we can begin considering if, in fact, this is, again, a valid pyramid by looking at the diagonals. So the first diagonal we'll look at is this diagonal here. So for this diagonal, the length of this diagonal is 1 times square root of 2. So it's square root of 2. And if we try to form a triangle with this side so that we have the vertices this, this, and the apex, so we have a 2 here, or rather square root of 2 here, and this side is a square root of 2, and here is again square root of 2. So we form an equilateral triangle. And that sounds good because we know a lot of things about equilateral triangles. So we might be able to use that later. But before that, let's look at the other diagonal. So the other diagonal is this way. Again, the length is square root of 2. And now the sides that the sides of the triangle that contain this diagonal would be one of the sides would be this which is 1, the other side would be this, which is square root of 3. That means we have a right triangle because it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. We see if we have the length 1 here, 1 squared, square root of 2 squared, this is just equal to the third side squared. And that means that this side, this side is perpendicular to the diagonal. That's very good because that means that we have our height because the height is the length from the base to the apex such that it is perpendicular to the base. And so we have an h of 1. Now we know that the side of the square is 1, which gives us the area of the base which is just 1, and now we know that the height of the pyramid is also 1. Therefore, this becomes very easy to compute. We get a volume 
of one third. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!